Hello and welcome back to part 2 of our tutorial on using Google's document AI as a form parser. In the previous video, we learned to set up a few prerequisites in order to be able to use the form parser functionality. In that video, uh, we learned to create a new project in the Google Cloud Console and we also saw how we can create a new service account for using the document AI functionality and we generated a key also uh, for the service account which will be acting as an API key uh, in our project and that key was uh, saved in a JSON format on our local system. After that we saw how we can enable the uh, cloud document AI service for our account and following which we created a form parser processor as well. So now we have all the things that we require to integrate the form parser functionality into our own code. So now we are ready to dive into the code and learn how we can use the form parser processor in a Python script or more precisely I should say in a Python application that we have developed in Flask. So before proceeding with the code walkthrough, let me brief you on the objective of the application. We have a few PDFs which have uh, some kind of tabular data in them in different languages, basically in English and Hindi. And our app will extract the data from the PDFs along with the uh, tabular layout uh, using the form parser. And then it will save uh, the extracted tables from the PDFs as an Excel file. So this is how our application is going to work. So uh, now that we know uh, what we are going to uh, dive into, uh, let's start by breaking down the Python code step by step. And also please note that I'll just be giving a brief overview of the application's code. Okay, so uh, let me share my screen. So uh, here on the screen you can see the directory uh, which we are maintaining uh, for the Flask application that we have. This application uh, processes PDF files and extracts structured data using uh, the form parser processor. You can see there are several files uh, present in this uh, directory along with some other folders as well. So let me just quickly give you a brief of all these files that are present in here. First and foremost, this is this particular file here that I have selected is the service account key that we have generated uh, using the Google Cloud Console, right? And then we have some uh, Python scripts uh, for utility. Uh, these uh, scripts will uh, provide us with some functionalities uh, which are required uh, by the application to uh, work properly. And then uh, we have some templates where we are storing uh, the HTML files for the application. And uh, basically these three folders are the folders that are going to uh, store the uh, final product as well as the intermediate files that are generated while processing the PDFs. So Excel files, uh, this folder will be uh, storing uh, the Excel files, the intermediate Excel files that are going to be created uh, at the time of processing and split PDFs is also going to save some intermediate PDF files at the time of processing and the output is the folder where we will be uh, getting our final processed output of a PDF. Now uh, what are these intermediate files you must be wondering right. So in this case as I have told you earlier that the maximum limit for form parser is 15 pages. That is you can only pass in a PDF of up to 15 pages to the form parser to work properly. If the limit exceeds then you will uh, be facing some kind of errors where it will uh, show that the uh, maximum limit has been exceeded. So whenever we uh, have a PDF which is having more than 15 pages so what we will do is uh, we are going to split it into several PDFs and then we will uh, you know process each of those PDFs and uh, we will generate uh, different Excel files for different PDFs and uh, later on we will combine all the Excel files and we will generate the output. Okay, uh, it will be more clear to you when we are discussing the code. So now let's uh, just dive straight into the code.
also uh, before discussing the code let me just uh, quickly show you the uh, data as well that we are going to use these are the example pdfs uh, let's just check out this pdf uh, we use this pdf in the previous uh, video as well so we will be using this this is having uh, 17 pages please note so we will be splitting it and then you will be able to see uh, what all intermediate files i was talking about and then uh, we will uh, make use of this kind of pdf as well it is only having one page but it is in hindi so we will see uh, how the form parser will work uh, with extracting and identifying these kind of text as well which is in hindi and not in english okay so uh, now let's uh, move on to the coding part Now here at the beginning of the uh, app.py script, we have imported the necessary libraries including uh, Flask for the web application and various utilities for handling PDFs and uh, Google Cloud services. Right. So um, here um, these are nothing uh, but the path to these uh, folders that I have described here. Right. And uh, we come to here, this is the service account credentials uh, that is required for us to make a connection uh, with the Google Cloud service, right? So here we are just defining the path to the service key, uh, this uh, service key, right? So this uh, path to key is actually uh, storing a path which is pointing to uh, this key. And then here uh, to the uh, Google application credentials, we are passing uh, the path to this key so that we will be uh, authenticated and we are able to make a connection uh, with the service. After that, here is the project ID. Okay, now let me just uh, show you it in the Google Cloud Console where you can find all these uh, necessary uh, values right i have already shown it in the uh, previous video but let's just have a quick recap so this is our project here you can see and from here you can get the project id which we are using here so you can just uh, simply uh, copy it from here so this was our project project document ai let's just go into the project right and uh, we are we have already verified that this is the project id here and then location by default is us until and unless you have specified any other location uh, while creating uh, this uh, project right and then this is the uh, path to the api endpoint for form parser right the processor that we created let's just quickly take a look at this you can just search my processors in the search bar here and uh, when you will click on it you will see this kind of information now here we are using this prediction endpoint uh, from here to here let me just select the text so this is uh, the prediction endpoint uh, which we are going to use this part uh, we are already you know uh, having in the uh, code uh, like it is hard coded in the code so we only need the path from this point onward okay please uh, don't include this process thing otherwise you would uh, face some errors so this is all the uh, necessary details that we require from a Google Cloud Console. Okay, so that is why I told you that these are the prerequisites and it is very important to know uh, how you can generate these values. After which here in uh, the home page, we are just rendering the uh, HTML uh, for the upload page for our application. And here we are uh, defining the functionalities uh, which are to be performed. But before we come to this part, uh, we need to check out all the utility functions that we have. So that explaining uh, 
this particular functionality becomes easier okay so now in this utility python script we will find uh, several functions which are uh, going to be useful uh, for processing the pdf file that we have okay and converting them into excel and also uh, there is one function uh, to combine all the excel files so let's just uh, quickly touch up on these functions and uh, what they are meant to do so uh, the first function here is the create zip file and it will uh, as the name suggests turn a file into a compressed file okay and then here uh, is this function called is pdf by extension now this function checks if a file is a pdf based on its file extension i know that uh, there are better ways uh, to determine whether a file is pdf or not but for the sake of convenience let's just uh, do it this way in this project right so this function is going to return true if the file has a dot pdf extension otherwise it will return false okay so uh, it uh, adds the functionality uh, to the application that it will only uh, work with the pdf files then uh, the number of page check function is a function that checks if a pdf has more than n pages so the uh, default value for n is 10 uh, here we could have uh, made the default value as 15 also but just to stay clear from the errors the default value is 10 you can uh, have any value up to 15 okay then uh, this function is also going to return boolean and it will return true if the pdf has more than n pages otherwise it will return false okay so in the case of this file here if you pass this file to that particular function then it will return true because it is having more than 10 pages okay so then next function is split pdf as the name suggests it is going to split the uh, pdfs based on the number of pages okay so you can see that it takes the uh, path to the pdf full path and then it uh, takes in the parameter called pages per split like on how many pages we want to split the pdf so here the default value is 10 so this particular file again um, we we'll use it for reference that uh, if it is having 17 pages then it will be splitted into two pdfs the first one will be having 10 pages and the other one will be having 7 uh, pages and similarly if this pdf had 30 pages then it would have been split into uh, three different pdfs each having 10 pages so this is the use of uh, this function so then we have the combine excel function uh, this function is used to combine multiple excel files into a single excel file so like uh, i told you that the split function is going to divide uh, a particular pdf which is having more than 15 or 10 pages into different parts and each of those parts are going to be processed and converted into excel files so we need a function to combine all those excel files into one single excel file so that for one pdf file we have one single excel file as the output then we have the delete files function which is uh, just you know going to delete all the files which are present in a directory so it takes in the path to the directory as a parameter and then deletes every every file which is present in that directory okay so these were the utilities uh, for handling uh, the pdf files and combining the excel files but then we have another utility uh, python script uh, that is the google utility and in here we are going to uh, write the uh, functions and in here we are going to find the functions which are uh, going to be corresponding to the functionality of the form parser and extracting the uh, layout of the tables okay so you can see here that we have imported um, google clouds translate and document ai in here and then we are setting the uh, directory to the excel files
so we can ignore this first function uh, for now and uh, quickly uh, come to this quick start function now in this file we are going to find uh, the functions which will help us to you know in this file we will find uh, the helper functions to deal with uh, the google cloud uh, in, in the back end so you can see here that <clears throat> so in this python script we are going to find the utilities uh, which are uh, in this python script we are going to find uh, the helper functions to get us started with google clouds document ai and basically using the form parser and extracting the uh, tabular layout from the structured data so let's just uh, quickly take a uh, overview of this uh, utility file as well so uh, we can ignore the first function for now we will come to it later and uh, let's just uh, quickly come to this uh, function called quick start so this function interacts with the form parser processor and it sends the pdf content and retrieves the structured data from it you can see that this function is uh, taking in uh, four parameters and basically these are the project id location the path of the file in question and the processor name so we can say that this is the main function obviously because it is uh, dealing with the form parser and this requires all these functions in order to connect to the form parser that is why uh, generating all these values uh, were very necessary that we have defined here right so then here we are just uh, setting up the api endpoints for the uh, location that is us and uh, we are connecting to this form parser here right you can see here we are uh, passing the uh, location so this part here is nothing uh, but just uh, this part of the api endpoint which i told you that this is going to remain the same based on the location so it's just uh, the location is varying otherwise it's same and then here we are just connecting to document ai's document processor service client so this is the client uh, which is uh, pointing to the api endpoint after which here we are reading the file into memory and loading the binary data that is the a pdf file that we want to convert into excel file right and then we uh, just send the request uh, to document ai to process the document and convert it into a format which is a document ai dot document format okay so you can see that the result that we are getting from that result we are extracting a document and that document is going to have this kind of file type and this is going to store all the information regarding the table that has been extracted and all the values uh, which are present in different cells of the tables so this is what is being generated uh, by this quick start function that is the output of the form parser processor like uh, you take in the pdf file you connect uh, with the form parser you pass in the pdf file to document ai you pass in the uh, pdf file to document ai's form parser 
and then the form parser processes the PDF and extracts uh, the relevant data from it, uh, which is stored into a file uh, which is different from a PDF file. And the type of that file is a document AI dot document. And uh, that is what is being returned from this function. After this, we have a few helper functions like layout to text and then a text anchor to text and get table data and print table rows. These are the functions which are, you know, uh, used to convert the offsets into a string and then uh, convert the uh, text and data from the rows. And then we have a few functions like uh, layout to text and uh, text anchor to text and get table data and print table uh, rows. These are the utility functions which are going to extract the uh, text from the structured data that is uh, provided in this kind of document that is returned from the quick start function. These functions are basically going to convert offsets into strings and then you know getting the text and the table rows and then printing it into a nice manner. So these are the uh, utility functions and these are available in uh, Google Cloud Platform's GitHub page. Let me just uh, quickly show it to you. You can just directly uh, take the code from there. Yeah, you see a uh, get table data is there then text anchor to text. So all these uh, functions are uh, defined here already. Uh, you can check out uh, Google Cloud's uh, GitHub and uh, then let's come to the other function which is the process PDF function. So uh, this uh, quick start function was uh, one of the major functions in here uh, which is uh, dealing with the form parser and then extracting the structured data from the PDFs and uh, it is generating a document file which is having a file type of document ai dot document as i told you right and uh, then uh, this process pdf function is going to take in a google cloud document or basically i should say a document ai dot document type of a document and then it reads its tabular layout and saves the content of the table into an excel file so it is uh, taking two parameters. First is the document itself, the document that is received after uh, being uh, processed uh, by the form parser. And then uh, we are also passing in the name of the file that we are dealing with. That is the name of the PDF file that we upload for uh, in order to extract the uh, structured data from it and convert it into an Excel. So these are the two parameters that are passed to this function. And here what we are doing is we are identifying the number of tables which are identified by the form parser into each of the page of the PDFs and then we are just uh, calculating the number of rows and number of columns and we are printing it out and uh, here we are extracting the row values and the body values basically uh, the uh, column or header values and the uh, body values. We are making use of the get table data function. Basically, I told you that these are the helper functions which are going to help us to extract the uh, data uh, from the document AI dot document type of file. And then we are just uh, converting uh, these uh, values that we have extracted in the form of list into a pandas data frame. And after that, we are just saving the uh, pandas data frame as an Excel file by making use of the two Excel function. Now, there is a catch while saving the pandas data frame into Excel files uh, because our application is going to work with different kind of PDFs, right? Like there is not going to be a set schema of the PDFs or basically the tables uh, which are going to be present in the PDFs. So we cannot, uh, you know, keep appending uh, the rows uh, by identifying the uh, header values. So we devised a way to uh, get around uh, this issue. And what here, what we are doing is for each of the page of the PDF. So let's say that we have uh, this page here. This is the first page of the PDF. And in here, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we will create an Excel file. 
and in that excel file the first sheet would correspond to the first page and then for the next page we will create another sheet in that same excel file so that is how uh, we can get around this kind of issue because the tables in the pdfs are not going to uh, follow a set schema right so that's what uh, we are doing here so basically if we are into page 1 then we will create a new excel file but uh, after uh, that like uh, when we are on to subsequent pages like uh, page 2 and page 3 and so on then uh, we will just uh, add the tables into the next sheet of that particular pdf of that particular excel file so uh, this is uh, what is happening here and then here we are just uh, calculating the time that it is going to take for that kind of operation and this is the uh, utility function uh, for like corresponding to the google functionalities and uh, now uh, we are ready to uh, come to this function like uh, what is happening here now it will be more clear so let's try to understand how the application is going to work here in the uh, home page once we upload the pdf file and it is available to the back end we are going to check whether it is a pdf or not by making use of the is pdf by extension function and uh, if it is a pdf then we will uh, proceed uh, with uh, its processing otherwise uh, the program will raise an error that the file is not a pdf and uh, once uh, and then we check whether the pdf has more than n pages basically uh, the n is 10 and then we check whether the file has more than 10 pages or not i told you that uh, the value can be up to 15 in this case because form parser has a limit of only 15 pages per pdf uh, in its free tier okay Uh, if you are uh, using a paid version of form parser then this limit will exceed uh, for you and you can change the limits according to your situation then um, if the pdf is having more than 10 pages then it will uh, split the uh, pdf based on the number of pages per split and here the uh, value we have set is 10 so per 10 pages the pdf would be split and then we just get a list of all the pdf files after split by listing the directory that is a split pdfs so once the pdf is split then all the splits would be saved in the split pdfs directory because the function here this split pdf function is going to save uh, the files into the output directory for them which is nothing but the split pdfs directory and after that uh, we will just process each of the pdf in that folder one by one so here what we are doing is we are generating the uh, output from the quick start function that is a document ai type document and then uh, we are processing the pdf uh, we are just passing this document to it along with the name of the pdf that we have uh, extracted here by making use of regex and then uh, this process pdf function is saving each of these pdfs one by one into uh, an excel file so for one split of the pdf we will have one excel file and that excel file is going to have as many sheets as many pages as present in that particular pdf and so uh, let's say if a pdf file is divided into uh, two pdfs then we will have uh, two corresponding excels for them and then uh, we will be combining these excels to generate a final excel file which is going to be saved into the output uh, folder here uh, you can see here in the combine excel files that the output directory is this output directory output file and you can check in the uh, combine excel uh, function that the directory where it is going to save the combined excels is the output directory which is uh, pointing to the output folder that is going to store our final output 
so this is the flow of the code when we have a pdf which is having more than 10 pages but let's say the pdf is having less than 10 pages then in that case we don't need to split it right so this else part deals with that case here we are doing all the same things but we are just uh, not splitting the pdf in this time and then we just uh, make the output file available uh, for the downloads so as soon as the pdf has been processed and the final output has been generated your file will be automatically downloaded so now uh, that we have covered the walkthrough of the code let's just see all this in action then it will be even more uh, easier to understand it so let me activate the virtual environment let me go to the directory and now we will run the application so this is the home page and uh, we are going to upload the pdf from the example pdfs folder right so this is the pdf and now it is processing let's check out the split has been uh, completed because it is having more than 10 pages right so you see that two splits are there of the pdf and then for each of the splits is going to list the uh, number of tables that has been found for each page and how much time uh, the processor took to convert it into an excel file okay and that's it now it has been downloaded we can just check it just see it's so accurate right so here this is the actual pdf right and uh, it is having serial number test name and test rate and you can see uh, the first entry is 17 alpha hydroxyprogesterone and you can see the same here this is the first row and it has been converted into table the same goes with this right and then uh, you can see here that uh, these pages like this uh, in the name of the sheet uh, the f1 indicates uh, the first file that is the first split and then here F2 indicates the split from the uh, second file and as I told you that the second file is going to have 7 pages so there are only 7 pages and in total there are 17 sheets in this excel file okay because there are 17 pages in this pdf file so that's the working of this particular application but let's say that uh, you only have to deal with one particular kind of schema in the pdfs then uh, you don't need to create se separate sheets like in that case then we will be able to you know fine tune the code to save all the data into um, a single table one after the other by reading all the pages but let's say uh, why we had to uh, do this kind of thing in this particular project so let me first just show it to you that how the splits are going to be made these are the splits that i was talking about the first split is going to have 10 pages as you can see here that it is having 10 pages and then uh, here is the second split that is having seven pages in it and then intermediate excel files are also present here you can see that for the first split the excel file is only having 10 pages 
right and similarly uh, the other excel file is going to have only uh, seven sheets in it let's quickly uh, check that as also so this is the file here and then we just combine these two excel files to generate our final file which is here so this is the uh, processed file that is the final file that we were able to download let me just uh, quickly delete it Basically here uh, we had the code to uh, delete all the files after like the file has been downloaded but uh, just so that we are able to show uh, the intermediate files how they are going to be saved that is why I have uh, commented that part out of the code of the application and now uh, let's just try it uh, with some other PDF that is the Hindi PDF right so I'm going to upload it here and it is processing you see the rate list is being processed and there was only one page and you can just see that it is uh, taking uh, just seconds to extract uh, the structured data from the PDFs by the uh, form processor and now just take a look at this see how well uh, it has extracted the data from the PDF file there is uh, no kind of mistake in here and that's pretty much it also um, what we can do in here is that we can also convert this Hindi text into English text by making use of Google's translation API as well. So uh, let's just quickly see how we can do that. So for for us to be able to you know uh, use the Google Translate API, again we will have to enable that service for our account, and for that we need to go to the API library. And then we write translation and here you can see uh, that these three uh, services are provided by Google Cloud and the service that we are interested in is the cloud translation API because it is used to integrate the text translation into the website or application the translation hub is basically uh, a kind of translation which is being done by humans so it's not automatic and it's going to take time so let's quickly check out the service and here uh, because I have already enabled it uh, for this project uh, there is an option to manage but let's say that you have not enabled this service for your account then instead of manage there would have been a button for enabling it and you will need to click on that once you click on it then uh, the API will be enabled for you and you will see this kind of interface and after enabling the cloud translation API in this uh, script here I have you know skipped this function earlier that is the translate text so here uh, we have already imported uh, the translation uh, function from the Google cloud and basically we are using that only in this translate function now this function is basically going to convert a text in Hindi into English so you see that we make a connection with the client and then um, we are going to use the translate function in the same way that uh, we connected to the client in the quick uh, start function and then we made use of the document AI service so uh, the same kind of thing we are doing here also and to this uh, translate function we are passing in the text of interest and we are setting the target language uh, 
by default we have set the uh, target language to be english and then uh, the source language has been uh, set to hindi now this is the code for hindi and en is the code for english so if you have a document in any other language and you want to uh, translate it into english or any other language then you will have to change the codes accordingly here okay you can find the code uh, in the list provided by google uh, where uh, you can find uh, different kind of languages that it recognizes along with its code so hi is the code for hindi and en is the code for english and uh, then uh, at the time of processing the pdf where we are extracting the uh, header values and the body values or basically the row values then uh, here before adding it to the uh, data frame we are going to translate it so i am uncommenting this part here and then instead of just passing the uh, header row values directly we are going to pass in the translated header so now that we have made the required changes let's try it let me just restart the app again so we pass in the pdf and here we see that the read list is being processed now the time for extracting the text from tables by the parser is approximately around 8 seconds so that part is very quick as i told you but now you see that it's uh, taking some time to generate the processed output and that is because of translation uh, since we have enabled the translation part in it it is going to take uh, approximately 3 uh, to 5 uh, minutes as i already told you so let's just see uh, once the uh, pdf has been processed like what kind of results we are getting so here we see that it uh, took approximately 3 minutes to translate the text from one single page so that is uh, the amount of time uh, that we were expecting um, that is 3 to 5 and uh, per page it is going to take that much amount of time if we are going to incorporate uh, translating now just uh, let's take a look at the output so you see now uh, we have converted the hindi pdf into an excel file that is in english let's just compare this is the file right so here aata chawal and namak is mentioned and they are basically uh, flour rice and salt in english and we see that it is on point like the translation is on point and there is uh, no any kind of mistake and that's it so that is how uh, we can create our own applications by making use of the uh, services that are being provided by google cloud so this was the code walk through of the application and uh, we learned how we can incorporate document ai as form parser that is uh, we were able to use the uh, form parser's uh, prediction and point in our own code to use its uh, functionality and not only that we also learned how we can incorporate the uh, google cloud translation api into our code as well and that's pretty much it and in a similar way uh, by making use of other apis of google we can create uh, applications like these uh, in this case we were particularly focused on a pdf but uh, as per your requirement even uh, different kind of applications uh, for processing different kind of 
uh, file types can also be uh, created so if you have made it so far into the video then uh, thank you for watching uh, if you are interested in this implementation or in a similar version of this kind of implementation then please feel free to contact us we will try to uh, help you to the best of our abilities and i suggest that you uh, stay tuned to our youtube channel for more such videos and ideas for applications um thank you and have a nice day